Um, I have the great honor of introducing the man who has some pretty big shoes to fill. His passion for neurosurgery was really ignited during his residency under Dr. Spetzler. He is the professor and vice chairman of neurological surgery at the University of California, San Francisco, and the incoming president and CEO of Barrow Neurological Institute. Please welcome to the stage Dr. Michael Lawton. Thank you. Uh, if I could get my slides, please. What an amazing thing to have to reach the end of your career and to have over a thousand people from around the world uh, come pay tribute. It's really an amazing thing. So um, what I thought I would do is uh, reflect on the Spetzler legacy a little bit for you because a lot of people have heard about the legacy project, the legacy building, the legacy this and that. And many of you probably don't know what the Spetzler legacy even is. So I wanted to just answer that question for you. What is the legacy? Well, a legacy, I think, is best if you understand it like you do a bumper sticker. If you can boil something down to something so basic and concise that you, you get it instantly. And so for John F. Kennedy, it was the moonshot, putting that man on the moon. He did other things, but that was his legacy. And for guys like Steve Job, it was the, his bumper sticker is what we hold in our hand, uh, in our iPhones, in our Apple products. And for Michael Jordan, of course, the greatest basketball player of all time. Well, for Dr. Spetzler, as I thought about what his legacy to us is, it really is this. He redefined operability in our field. And that is sort of the creed that has become the BNI motto, accept challenges, reject norms, and push boundaries. Uh, nothing speaks to that operability uh, better than the giant Basler aneurysm. This was a lesion, these giant aneurysms in the deepest possible place that nobody wanted to touch, that everybody felt was inoperable. And he would cool the body to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, stop the heart, put patients on heart-lung bypass machines, and prove to the world that you could clip these aneurysms and get patients off the table safely and that they would actually do well. Operability also means operator ability. And what we saw in him was a very rare surgical talent. He makes brain surgery look easy, and whether it's his delicate touch, his perfectionism, his anatomy knowledge, his experience, whatever it was, he got results, and people traveled for that. Operator ability also means just displaying that rare character in the operating room, that heart and that courage. And we saw it time and again. Many a times he would push back from the microscope with that face after having battled some tremendous pathology and won the battle. These were some of my favorite times in uh, residency, spending an hour at the end of the day with him and just getting inside of his mind as we looked over cases, talked about knowing uh, or when to operate, uh, talking about when not to operate, and knowing the best approaches. These were those strategic sessions where we saw a master strategist in action. And he defined for us in those sessions operability. The grading system that made him famous is nothing more than just a man walking up to the line and over it occasionally, but defining that line so clearly for the rest of us. So that is the legacy. But the question really is, why does that matter? Why does this legacy matter? Why are we all here? Well, the answer is uh, simple from my personal story. Uh, I first met him when I was a medical student at Johns Hopkins, and this is a picture from circa 1988 or 89 when that happened. And uh, for me, this changed my life. Um, at the time, I was interested in brain tumors, and I didn't even know what an AVM was, really, and uh, it changed my thinking. I was all of a sudden interested in vascular neurosurgery. I went from being interested in neuroscience to being interested in technique. I went from being very comfortable in the Eastern establishment to thinking about the Western frontier. I went from being in a comfortable, prestigious, well-recognized institution to going to a place that many of my medical student friends had never heard of and where actions and deeds mattered more than prestige and recognition. And so I chose the, the road less traveled instead of the road well-worn. And I joined the group. I drank the Kool-Aid. I accepted the challenges, et cetera. And in that bottom corner, that was one of the happiest and saddest days of my life when I graduated and achieved the uh, 
the, uh, or finish the training, but also when I had to leave the nest. And so um, I went on. And f f when we all leave the nest, we leave inspired, uh, whether it's as uh, medical students, residents, or fellows. And we become disciples. We become standard bearers, bearers of, the, of the barrow. And there are levels. We have level one where we just are almost uh, called upon to deliver on the expectation or just go out and do what he has trained us to do. Level two, though, is really becoming masters in our own right. And finally, level three is going beyond, above and beyond even him. Uh, well, I went off to San Francisco, uh, which, by the way, was the place where he trained. So it was a real honor for me to uh, go through that delivery on expectations at his place and show his place what I became working with him. Uh, but I, I think I went beyond that to level two. I did uh, many cases. I wrote books on AVMs. And I feel like um, you know, these 20 years as I close out that chapter in my life has, has brought me to that second level. That's my story, but these are all of the people that have been through the BNI, and you can see it's just an endless parade of really talented, gifted people. And when you think about, when I think about this, this is a box that I keep in my office, and every time a patient thanks me for saving their life on a card, I save that card, and you can see the box runneth over. Uh, that's my story, but we all have that story. We all have gone out, and we all have touched so many lives ourselves. And so this, magna this magnification or multiplication ha has happened as a result of Robert Spetzler. This is a quote, a favorite of mine from Robert Kennedy that says, every time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Well, we are all of your tiny ripples of hope, and we have gone out there and I think uh, have done, uh, had some, some impact on the world. Uh, I'm just one tiny ripple of hope, and uh, fortunately for me, I've been lucky enough to have been given this opportunity to lead the barrow. I'm very grateful. Uh, I will carry the torch. I will preserve the legacy, and I will push onward to level three. And uh, I do believe that this truly is an amazing legacy that you've left us. Uh, neurosurgery is truly different today because of you. Uh, you are a truly great master, and we respect not only what you are, but how you did it. Uh, you have redefined for us this operability with your excellence, your daring, your strategic thinking, and your strength of character. It's everything about you. It's hands, head, and heart. And, uh, I promise you that the BNI will remain the, le the institution that you have made it. Thank you. Wait a minute. Do you bike? Do you know German? Oatmeal raisin cookies in the morning? Speedo, I guess, in the hot tub in the morning? <laughs> All right. We still need to get to know the real you. I feel like we've got to know the real Dr. Spet. We'll do that next year. We'll do that next year. Thank you, Dr. Lawson.